And finally, new rule, praise Jesus. It's a Christmas miracle. For the first time in the 21-year history of this show, we are on in December, which gives me a chance to explain to everyone something I've always wanted to expound upon in this show. You know that whole thing about Jesus being born on December 25th? Well, it's a crock of shit. <laughs> Now, this is not an attack on Jesus, although he was a Nepo baby. <laughs> but also a revolutionary philosopher with a beautiful message. As to whether he's a god, that's up to you. But if the subject is gods born on December 25th, <laughs> we have enough of those for an entire Jeopardy category. <laughs> he was the Egyptian god who took the form of a falcon, who is Horus. He is the god from ancient Persia, born bearing a torch. Who is Mithra? He is the Greek god of rebirth. Who is Adonis? He was the fertility god in Cleopatra's time. Who is Osiris? This Greek deity was known for having a good time. Who is Dionysus? Well, yeah, we wrapped up the Emmy with that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you may be asking, oh, those are all real, by the way. I think that was the problem. They think I'm making this up, but I'm not. Why do all the gods want the same birthday? Well, because December 25th was a pagan holiday, coming a few days after the shortest day of the year, when primitive peoples noticed that the days were starting to get longer again, and so a cause for celebration. Cut to... And that's the story of Christmas. <laughs> a holiday I love, by the way. The tree, the presents, the music, the Christmas memories with my sister and our cousins, filling the bong with eggnog. <laughs> it's the only time of the year it's okay to put alcohol in milk. <laughs> Christmas is fun if you just accept it's pretend time, like a Hollywood wedding. <laughs> yes, I love Christmas and always have. Just don't try to make me take it seriously. And that is what has been going on a lot lately here in America. We have a new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who says America is actually a biblical republic, and that he's even got a flag picked out that hangs outside his office, and which also could be seen in the mob on January 6th. Mike also says the separation of church and state is a misnomer. And Congresswoman Lauren Boebert concurs, saying she's tired of the separation of church and state junk. <laughs> so too Marjorie Taylor Greene, who says, I say it proudly, we should all be Christian nationalists. Now, I know it may seem like this is just a few crazies, but I gotta tell you, dumbass Republicans who believe horrible ideas are like ants, there's always more that you can't see. <laughs> and in fact, these ideas are no longer the fringe. According to a recent survey, over half of Republicans are either adherents of Christian nationalism or sympathetic to it. And they agree with statements like, the U.S. government should declare America a Christian nation, and being Christian is an important part of being American, and God has called Christians to exercise dominion over all areas of American society. I'm sorry, but I don't want anyone exercising their dominion over me unless I pay them and we've established a safe word. <laughs> Bobert says the church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. Well, no and no. <laughs> Neither one is supposed to direct the other. That's what separation of church and state means. Republicans, Jesus fucking Christ, first you stop believing in democracy. Senator Mike Lee said it, among others. Trump lives the idea every day. And here we have the Speaker of the House saying it. And now Republicans also don't believe in the separation of church and state. Does anyone in that party remember what fucking country you're living in? <laughs> 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 
We're the place that stakes so much of our greatness on being the first to specifically prohibit having a state religion. There are dozens of countries that have an official religion. There's 13 where being an atheist is punishable by death. Four have an Islamic right in the title of the country. And maybe that warms the hearts of the TikTok crowd who lately have found heroes in Hamas and Osama bin Laden. But that's not us. That's not what we do here. I get it, you kids like to switch things up. <laughs> but I can only handle one side at a time being ridiculous about religious fanaticism. And right now I've got my hands full with Mike Johnson. <laughs> Because Mike Johnson... Because Mike Johnson has the power to actually make laws. And I don't want my global warming policy decided by someone who is rooting for the end of the world so we can get on with the rapture. <laughs> and who once filed a legal brief before the Supreme Court arguing that what he called deviant same-sex intercourse should be a crime. Even the lesbian stuff? <laughs> Mike thinks God personally chooses, raises up our leaders, which is a very dangerous thought, because then when you lose an election, you think it's just another of God's tricks to test your faith, like fossils. <laughs> Mike says, we began as a Christian nation. We didn't. Did you miss that day in homeschool, Mike? <laughs> if you don't know that the pilgrims came here to get away from the Church of England, then you don't know, literally, the first thing about our country. Mike... Mike says being a Christian nation is our tradition, and it's who we are as a people. It's not. We're the people who have a First Amendment, which says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. And we have an Article 6, which says no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office. So I take these people at their word when they say that they think we should be Christian nationalists. But then they have to take John Adams at his word when he wrote, the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. But I still love Christmas!